DM and Dragon, the uh, the almighty DM of uh, D&D Nights that I do. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yes. Just so everyone knows on stream, uh, uh, Silver Flight, a.k.a. Luna Cloud Chaser from our Tuesday night D&Ds, is here with her mother, who suffers from MS, and we're definitely going to talk this. This is the reason why we're definitely raising money for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. That is awfully kind of you guys to try to do. That's great. Thank you. It's our pleasure, uh, but for people to understand what you could be going through and such, would you mind talking to us about it a little bit? Well, um, where do you want me to start from the very beginning? I mean, it's been a 20-year history at this point. By all and, means. Uh, and, okay, and so in the beginning, it just started with, you know, numbness and tingling in my legs. And, um, and unfortunately, I used to smoke, and I just kind of blamed it on that. Figured I had some um, arterial sclerosis starting to set in, which is a hardening of the arteries from cigarette smoking, and didn't think anything of it. And I worked as a nurse, and I continued to work, and um, continued to take care of my mom that also had MS. And then my younger brother, a couple of year, uh, a year and two weeks to the day, actually, that my mom had passed and we had buried her. My brother got diagnosed with MS. And uh, he was, it was right before his 20th birthday. And then he was on, um, you know, a drug that either it was the real drug or it was a placebo. So he started out this stu study right from the very beginning. And then he was killed in a car accident 10 months later. And so I don't know how his MS would have been doing, but then it's just really strange because three years and just three days shy from the day my brother was diagnosed, I got diagnosed with EMS in March of 2000, um, exactly. And it was, Emily was 13 months old when I got diagnosed. And the numbness and tingling actually by then was really significant and was moving up into my arms. It was really difficult. Um, as a matter of fact, I was really having difficulties, um, she was an emergency C-section, and I had to um, have my C-section incision uh, reopened because it was infected and it would not heal. And that's before I got diagnosed. And then um, I had a hernia repair done there, so my stomach was open for a third time just to fix that hernia that um, had been ruined. And within that same month is when the numbness went up to my arms. And I was staying home from work, just recovering from um, the hospital stay to get that hernia the repair done on the incision. And I couldn't even open up a jar of peanut butter. And uh, so I knew something was significantly wrong, and that's when I went in and got diagnosed. And it's just been a downward hill climb ever since. Um, there's just days where, you know, fatigue, I, don't, I can't even, I can't even, Describe. Yeah, I, I, ha I, there's no way for me to even be able to describe, you know, the fatigue that I feel. You know, it's crazy. You ever, I hear people say, oh, I'm so tired. And it's just like, I'm looking at them going, I woke up tired. And I sat at the side of my bed tired for three hours and still couldn't move. And then found a way to manage to get to rest. And it's, um, it's very daunting. And it's um, something that you know, I don't wish upon anybody. It's um, a very, very significant. It hasn't stopped at me in my family history. And um, so it's been it's been one of those diseases that just happened to obviously exist in my family. And I know many, many people are um, have fallen victim to it. And I don't consider it to be, you know, fallen victim to it as much as it's just another thing that's made me want to stand up and fight even harder. And But I also have to be um, understanding with myself because what I think that I can still do and what the reality is of what I can still do is two different things. But I can clearly see everything that needs to be done. And I clearly see that I want to have it all done. But it's difficult to get it all done unless you've got you know, a million other pairs of hands that can help you. 
with it. And so I wouldn't, uh, again, it's just one of those things. And my walking's gotten a lot more difficult. And I do have to use assisted aids um, nonstop now. I mean, there's times where I'll be sitting at the side of my bed and I think, Candace, just walk up and you can go do it. And as soon as I think that I can stand up and just go do it, it's like trying to stand up is not easy to do. I can't, I have to use both of my hands to just help push me up off the bed to be able to stand, if that makes any sense. Oh, it, and, I, I so, understand that. I understand that. If you guys have any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer anything that I can. It's um, it's just grueling. You know, a lot of pain associated with it comes and goes. You just don't ever know how you're going to feel from day to day, you know. And I can sleep 15 hours and still wake up completely tired. Yes, yes. So, so for... Some of the viewers, hopefully, watching right now. I just pulled up stream chat. I just pulled up your stream because it's been a while. Yeah, so if any of them have a question, they're more than welcome to ask as well. Uh, I mean, I can understand this. I do suffer from uh, another disease called Ehlers-Denlos Syndrome, which uh, is a deteriorative joint disease. So I know how that can be about trying to walk at times. Cause yeah, my, it's probably my, extremely difficult for you. A lot of pain. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I can so understand I from your point of view how the pain is, how to even get up to even move some days. But I know that's like an everyday thing for you. Yeah, no, and, it, and it's, uh, and it, you know, it, the, the, it just all ranges. It's so difficult. I mean, there's days where my body feels numb and tingly, and then there's days that I can feel every single one of my extremities. And then there's uh, a lot of pain. Usually, of course, when the numbness and tingling aren't there, then I do notice the pain a lot more because, of course, it's not numb. But um, in the fatigue, I would have to say, and it's um, it's a debilitating disease to the point that, you know, sometimes I I wish that it would have started in the very beginning of my life, because then I wouldn't have been able to achieve all of the things that I once was able to achieve. Um, you know, going to school and graduating and putting myself through nursing school and working as a nurse for years and then having to adapt to this lifestyle and having a younger daughter um, that uh, has kind of had to fumble around in life, trying to figure things out on her own, the things that I can't help her with anymore um, that are not just easily done, like being able to, I mean, I, I think it would be easy, but actually thinking about it and being able to do it, that's where it comes into play. It's just two different things. And, so I would love to take her and let her learn how to ride all of the bus systems here in our state and that she would be able to get herself around in the event that it ever got to be that she needed to do something like that. She could, but I, I'm just not capable of physically being able to go help her learn those things anymore. Yeah. So, and so yeah and, it's been hard. As a parent myself, I'm sure how that would be, and it it breaks your heart to not be able to do something like that, I believe. Yeah, oh, definitely. Well, and, and I've seen her struggles because of it, and, um, you know, it just, it, it, it's not fair, and it's not right, but I also don't believe that any of us should portray ourselves as victims. Because we all just have a certain path in life that we're supposed to take, I guess. And we all have our own journey. And um, how we learn to deal with that journey is um, all we can really, um, you know, talk about and be grateful for and hope that you can get other people to understand. I mean, I've met other people that just recently have been diagnosed with MS and you know, trying to, I mean, they just kind of look at you and say, you know, I, I'm not even wanting to even hear those words right now. I don't even, I don't even want to recognize the fact that I've got that 
because denial is such a powerful thing and um, it's very significant actually and it can um, lead you to a lot of depressive thoughts and um, you know worthlessness and feelings of irritability and um, where you also want to just kind of socially isolate I don't tend to be one of those um, because I feel like the more a person can know about the disease, the better they're going to be because once you get more information, you start feeling more empowered and you feel like you have a way to be able to combat things. But that doesn't mean that depression and, you know, um, side effects of you know, knowing that that struggle is so real and so there and wanting to continue to keep a smile on your face. Sometimes it's not the easiest thing to do, but um, I've managed to do my best over the years. And you've done great, Mom. Well, you know, I, I can't, I don't want to portray myself as a victim. I just, it is what it is. There's nothing. That, if anything is, it's the one that's going to beat the damn thing. Well, I always told my uh, neurologist that that was going to be the case, but. So far, we um, have not had um, we haven't had that breakthrough, but maybe I, I I still hold on to hope every single day. And the most important thing I think for anybody that may have somebody that's inflicted with this disease to and if they're fighting it themselves, that they just need to know that hope is the best thing, and they need to try to keep as positive and as optimistic as they can because it's not real easy to fight the depression that comes with this disease and it's very common for people to be depressed and but you know it's it's uh, taken away your identity it's taken away your freedom uh, everything that you once knew you're not able to go do what you once did and so it's it's been tough but i'm grateful that um you know, so far the medicines have been at least maintaining me because there are some people that get diagnosed and they go downhill really fast. And um, and that's really sad to see. I understand, understand that, 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 that. And that's why T B C why we fight to all these different charities because we want to see all this stamped out. We want to see MS where you're not going to this anymore. We don't want your loved ones even having to see you go through this. And that's why we're here doing what we can every day. Every day. That is so awesome of you guys to do. You know, I mean, it, uh, it, it really is. And I, I get very overwhelmed when I when we go to the MS-150 bike ride, too. Because it's, uh, you know, to see, you know, 1,300 riders show up. And, you know, it's 100 degrees outside. And they're in their MS um, shorts and, and the shirt that they wear and their tag on them to show have their number and you know they you watch them come in and they are so fatigued and you're just like saying thank you so very much and they're saying oh no thank you for letting us come and do this and they actually have to pay to ride in that it's like a $250 entrance fee or something like that per rider and then they have to um you know, get uh, support or, or, you know, they'll say, okay, I'm going to ride this amount of money. And she could be anywhere from like, you know, a five or 10, whatever your capabilities are, to a 40, to a 60, to a 75, to 150. But actually even just increased it to like a 200 mile over the weekend type deal. There's a lot of <laughs> bike riders out there that just are torn to just, put their bodies through all sorts of stuff, including the, uh, the elements, you know, to ride. So, um, and I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. I mean, anything helps. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, they, you know, the MS Society does their best to um, raise as much funds as they can. And so people that are so willing to join that effort, 
I'm so grateful for all of you. And so thank you very much for your time and your help and your support. It really means a lot to me. As I say, as I say as anytime, we anytime we try to reach out and help out everyone out we can. We and can and I mean, I even mean, though we're small, you know, growing and such with our family, I know as of right now, we've raised over $215 for this. I know, so, I just donated $5 because um, I got a friend that's going to pay me $5 back. You know, I appreciate, I, I appreciate, I mean, every single dime helps, right? It could be just uh, them supplying a locker for somebody that may need it. Yeah. Yeah. Every dime, every, every dime. dollar does count. That's the way I look That's at it. Look at We've had some <laughs> awesome, generous people <laughs> to donate to help <laughs> with this and <laughs> with other charities <laughs> as well. It's, it's we're spreading the word. <laughs> That's what we I can do the most. I try to throw in a five or ten dollars every charity I've always done if I can. <laughs> And I, I mean, I live on disability. I know how tight money is. Yeah, you know how tight the pennies are. Yes, but I still, even with that, I want to see all this. I would rather be doing what I still was doing, working in construction, doing trim work, doing what I did, what I love to do. And I can't even do that as physically and mentally. I can't anymore. And that's... So I, I can actually fill for you. You probably get in the car and you go by and you start seeing a bunch of construction people on the sides of the road fixing things. And you're like going, I used to do that. <laughs> well, construction well, job sides of buildings going up. Yeah, that's wishing I could just be one walking onto that job site to do the work. Yeah. And I'm yeah, sure okay. when you're going to, since you said you worked in as a nurse and such, whenever you're even going to see these doctors, it's like, I wish I could still be doing my job. Oh, yeah. And during this pandemic, it's been, uh, it's been very, very difficult for me to watch the suffering and the, um, the overwhelm that the medical people have got to have felt is, uh, I can only imagine. Yes, yes, indeed. indeed. I'm just going to call and mention at one point, I think my mom and I followed an ambulance just because she wanted to help because she was so desperate to help. <laughs> I, I do understand that. I actually have worked with my father in a volunteer fire department where we had EMS training. So I, I, I know that too. At times I almost want to pull over to assist, but I had a wreck, but... I can't do that either anymore. It's, anymore. it's just the physical, physical, mental problems with it. Yeah, are you are you doing okay for yourself? I mean, it, um, it's I'm like doing, just I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I'm doing just fine right now. That's a thing. I mean, I do things that help keep me going, like the streaming here. I do charities and. I'm the one that actually, well, Terry and Bullet Club, as it's known, TBC. Uh, when I joined up, I was doing my own charity each month. I always did a charity. That's what I do streaming for. I do charities. I don't care about making money for myself. It's for charity. And family here at TBC decided it needs to be a family thing, not just me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's awesome that everyone in your group is so willing to do this. It's amazing. And so I'm grateful to each and every single one of you. Oh, as I say, it's a pleasure for me to do this. And I think any of them would say that, including uh, if Beacon's still in here listening, I'm sure he'll say the same thing. Yeah, it's been nice. I actually... I don't know how much. Have you told her about the Witcher series at all, um, Northern? Um, I have not. 
basically we had this um, theme for Dragon and myself. I'm Beacon37, nice to meet you. Um, we took this medieval-like game where uh, they basically survived a bunch of mutations and stuff. And uh, yeah, you gotta have cat eyes and stuff. You have to have silver and steel weaponry. It's, it's a very interesting game. Um, and we, uh, I did the game for about 20 something days. Dragon did a campaign with that kind of like setting and stuff, has some magic in it, killing monsters with DD on the 18th. And we had some fun with that. Um, I have a question for you though. How has it been with dentist appointments with multiple sclerosis? Because I was thinking inside my head, it's like. You have all these feelings that you feel, you know, I'm tired, numbness, tingling. How has it been to go to a dentist? I'm hoping that's not a stupid question. I've been trying to think about it in my head. No question is a stupid question. No, 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 no question is a stupid question. Um, and um, it actually, I've got some people that, I mean, they've known me for years. I've gone to the same dentist office for Oh, since, so uh, let's see, sec second grade for you. So that, yep. it, about 12 years I've been going to the same dentist. And so they've had the opportunity to see me be able to just walk on in there, no problems. And then they've seen me having to walk in there with multiple problems and just it, having to really take my time to get in. And uh, they're always, they're right there by the door. And so if she sees me walking up, she immediately comes out of her um, office and comes to hold the front door open for me to get in. Um, so they, they've just all been really, really kind to me, and I'm so grateful. And the dentist has just been um, really sweet, too. I have absolutely no complaints. And they haven't treated me any different. They just... Uh, you know, occasionally they'll want to talk because, of course, they're probably wanting to know more. And rather than just looking at you and then not saying anything to you. Um, so when they do um, ask me questions, I have no problem answering it for them. Um, because a lot of people, you know, it's funny. They'll say, oh, you know, I've got a sister that's complaining of this and you know, so on and so forth, and I've had dental assistants telling me the same thing um, about their loved ones directly, and, you know, that they've had tests and nothing's come of it, and I told them that just because nothing came of it then doesn't mean that there should, couldn't be something coming about it later on in life. And it's just always something, even though they've been told, no, 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 I remember when I first graduated from nursing and I had to go to several different doctors because I knew something was wrong with me and that nobody could tell me. And um, so that I found that to be very frustrating. And because before I knew it, I felt like I was being a hypochondriac. And come to find out that wasn't the case at all. But again, the, the dentist has been really, really kind, and they've worked around me really, really well, and anybody that has any form of a disability, you know, your life, as you once knew it, when you're looking on into future things, you have to, you know, kind of plan ahead, and know what your limitations are, and what you're probably going to need to have in order to be able to go and enjoy those things or to just make those appointments that you need to get to um, possible. You're going to have to, you, you have to learn to ad adapt <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it's because it, it, where I was used to, you know, being able to just grab my purse and run on in and be done and run on out and be on my way. It, it's just, that's just not even realistic anymore. What used to take me, you know, five, ten minutes to do to get out the door and be on my way somewhere now takes me anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour just to be able to do it. Did that answer your question okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did an excellent job. I definitely appreciate that you 
acknowledged me and uh, it's just more motivation. Uh, I know the Multiple Sclerosis Society, they decided to follow Dragon and myself and I'm like, I guess we have to do this next year then. Oh, that's right. We wanted to do it anyways because, yeah, I love playing with your daughter. Um, and, and yeah, it's great to see you here. It's just more motivation to Maybe we'll get some even, you know, get some more people to talk about this. And we're already planning stuff for Alzheimer's, so uh, just wish us luck as uh, the Tyrion Bullet Club uh, kicks these uh, illnesses in the butt. <laughs> hey, that, that, <laughs> Got it. that sounds absolutely wonderful, and I say thank you very much. And I'm sure that anybody that's inflicted by any of it, including your uh, Dragon Master here, is that how you say it? <laughs> Dragon Master? Good yeah, sure. Dragon Master. <laughs> that, that'll work. <laughs> the, 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 the Dragon Master. You know, even for your type of disability, you know, um, it's, uh, it, all, it all needs help. It all needs a revamping of everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess Congress uh, may need to try to make some changes there. And um, to where they actually start seeing the importance of um, what the people actually need and not what all the congressmen and women want. <laughs> but things that they enjoy to go do, that the funding goes to all of those places. And instead of going to um, the American people like it needs to. Okay, Mom, before we get off, let's not talk politically. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm only talking congressional, you know. I, I, I know. I'm just... Mm. It's okay. It's okay. I understand where that was going, and I don't yeah, think it's yeah, going I mean, much further like that, and that's cool. Yeah. And it's totally understandable, and maybe it'll happen. When? I can't say. Hopefully. Well, none of us can, right? Exactly. But well, what we tried Oh sorry. But what we are trying to strive is to spread awareness and such and even though something's taking the front line on all of this, we can't just sit by and ignore everything else, like multiple sclerosis or Alzheimer's disease or cancer or any of that. We can't forget about those things for one virus. Yeah, absolutely not. Well, and if you guys need me to join in, um, thank you for um, inviting me in and, and being able to talk about this. And if you get other people that are involved and um, they want to actually talk to somebody that has it again, I'm more than happy to join in, no problem. Uh, thank you for your time. And, of course, appreciate you coming in and talking to us about this. And with that, to my stream, I thank you for staying around and listening to all this as we will go raid another streamer that is part of this as well, Sin of Anubis. He is doing a uh, playthrough of Divinity 2 Original Sin. I'm sure he will definitely keep this going right now for raising money for the National Multiple Squirrels and Society, so please help it out, spread the word. As I say, even though this is our last day, we are still going to leave the links up for a few days as we are switching, going to be switching over for next Friday for All Timers Association. So with that, keep on gaming, everyone. Good. Hey, see you, Dragon. See you, guys. See ya. See ya. See ya. Thank you so much, you guys. Appreciate ya. See ya. Time.